Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to meet a very special personality who helps people to go abroad and choose the right course and the right university. And if you have been searching for an agency or someone who can help you, first of all, this interview will help you. And you can also leave your questions in the comment section. And me and the guest who is going to appear in this interview, we will try to answer your queries. So let's welcome Mr. Kapil Gupta ji, who is the founder of Study Abroad Academy. Welcome, Kapil ji. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil ji. Uh, it's an honor, you know, to be interacting with you. And you are a very popular business coach. And being interviewed by a business coach is itself an honor. So thank you for inviting me for this. Thank you very much, Kapil ji. Once again, I thank you for your precious time. And I know that uh, it was scheduled to be done yesterday, but because of something, it could not be done. So thank you once again. So, so I have the right time yeah. is now today. Maybe the yes, right yes. time is now. That's why it didn't happen yesterday. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Great. So I have a few questions for you. So intentionally, I wanted to interview you because I am very much interested in this topic of uh, studying abroad, right? So in 2009, I remember that um, I wanted to study in Australia. My brother actually encouraged me to go to Australia and I was uh, uh, roaming in Karolba, Kanak Place, but I was not able to find a reliable office who could uh, guide me properly so i had been through this uh, situation myself so i have few questions first of all the situations have changed in the last uh, 10 to 12 years and especially after corona you must agree so now the question is uh, is it still relevant to study abroad or uh, we can do it from india itself see Okay, that's like a post-COVID question, <laughs> yeah. right? See, uh, after COVID or before COVID, have the education system changed in our country? No, it's still the same. Okay. As far as the impact of COVID is concerned, we can always say that now uh, we are going online also, right? The yes. universities, the schools, even the coaching institutes, they try to cater to the students in the online world also, right? Yes. But then we will agree that even today I was reading the newspaper, there was an article about that working professionals feel that when they are working in office, they are more productive. Yes. And then is education only about academics? No, it's like the overall development. The personality development is also part of the education, right? Yeah. So when we sit at home, we might do a course online. That's perfectly well. But the growing up age of the students, right? I will say even the young ones or the people uh, who are in college, right? And in fact, ourselves, we also say that we are lifelong learners, right? So in that way, yes. we are also students. So, yes. when we actually move out and study in the offline world, that, that's why I say that, see, when a person goes abroad, he gets a global perspective because he gets to meet, you know, different students from all over the world. So, he gets introduced to different cultures. Then, of course, if you are going to an English taught program or to a country where native language is English, then we might feel okay that we are comfortable. But if we, let's say, go to some European country like Germany, France, Netherlands, so we need to learn those languages, right? So yeah. we become multilingual, which yeah. adds to our personality, isn't it? So academic opportunities are in any case there, so that's not a problem at all. Then, So the short answer is we should go for uh, uh, studying abroad, right? Yes, yes. So, yes. Um, 
now the my, my my next question is kapil ji i have so many questions actually so no no please i am here to help uh, answer them and so i feel that the people who are going to watch this uh, video they should mm-hmm. get some value out of this interview that is my ultimate mm-hmm. objective they will i want to help the people who are interested in interested in studying abroad so the basic question is how to get started how a person can uh, get started that if he wants to study abroad what all preparation the person can start doing see first of all i would say that a person must begin from research okay because he should be very well aware of what he is getting into right okay and because choosing a program is a very very important aspect of this okay. for example when a student goes to like in 11 standard in our country we choose the street but let's say if that goes wrong yeah so our whole you know uh, career goes haywire so then uh, first research about the correct program then okay. the university and then the country but of course ap- apart from that uh, the financial constraints are also there so student must look into that because like in india we have like different colleges with different fee structure right the same goes with the study abroad universities so a person has the option to you know go as per his own budget and if he is not able to you know uh, get it done himself so obviously the ta- he should uh, approach some counselors who can actually give him that uh, knowledge and then they can help him to say right right so i would like to add here that uh, now as per my experience in the last 10 years i would like to say it is always uh, hire a good counselor than to keep struggling and keep wasting time and money yes. so it's always good idea to hire a counselor but again it is a very difficult to find the right counselor because there are so many uh, i would like to say people who are trying to cheat and they are interested in fraud so how to how to uh, avoid all those people uh sunil ji i'm happy you asked this question yeah. but like there are quacks in every industry right yeah so obviously this industry is also not uh, isn't able to avoid this but yes we can definitely research the consultants many a times people come to us through referrals because from our past students but of course then uh, apart from that if somebody some consultant is making you know very rosy claims very unrealistic claim or unrealistic promises so we should actually get into that uh, you know the research mode and mm-hmm. we should always check that whatever is uh, a person is offering is that process transparent right is he asking for upfront fees or is he asking for in installments as per the procedure like we have the construction linked plan in reality sector right yeah. so the same way that so oh. these things and of course we can always have you know take the advice of multiple consultants for yeah. example we say that okay when we go to a doctor we always try to take a second opinion so we might talk to multiple consultants and check uh, that if the person is giving the right you know advice or not so these are just checks that we can yeah. actually you know go for yeah so uh, i would like to add that uh, my father used to say ki jahan sab kuch aasan dikh raha ho badi aasani se sab kuch achieve ho raha ho wahan do kadam piche hat jao and try to understand ki why it is so easy right it is so, so see a uh, attractive a genuine consultant will never promise you admission or scholarship yeah they will promise so, the guidance ha. the support yes yes right right because right. see the eligibility has to be acquired by the student the counselor is only a guide to right the counselor will tell you inform you about the eligibility required by the university Yeah. that eligibility has to be acquired by the student the counselor will help you get over your confusions to give yes. you the clarity if there is some confusion yes. so yes. counselor is just a guide who will 
Yeah. Not let you wander here and there. Yeah, he's just hand holding you so that I don't lose your way. Yeah, yeah. So the next question is, um, people are going to Germany, yeah, they are going to Mexico, Russia, and so many other countries. So are they required yeah. to learn the language of that specific country or English language is enough? Okay. See, what happens is, let's say, if I go to England, if I go to America, US, Canada, their native language is English. Now for that, I must clear the IELTS or the TOEFL exam. Okay. Because as Indians, English is not our primary language. It is not our native language. Right? Yeah. But let's say, go to any other country in Europe. For example, France or Germany. Now, these universities, what they do, they provide both types of courses in their native language and as well as English. Right? Now, if as an Indian, I am comfortable in English, I might choose an English taught program in France. Right? Okay. So, for that, uh, once again, I'll have to clear the English exam as a foreign language. But learning French will be an added advantage because I have to interact with people. I have to live there. Right. So then, like in uh, different institutes in India, they teach those foreign languages. So they have different levels. So even the basic level will suffice when you are going for an English taught program. But Obviously, you must be an expert if you are going for that particular language or a German taught program or a French. So, that's, that depends what is a student's requirement. Yeah. So, as per my understanding, IELTS exam is also mandatory because they want to make sure that when you are there, you are not suffering. That you are able to understand what other people are saying. So, that you have to live there. Na? It is not just a classroom. You have to live life there. And in order to live life there, you must be able to communicate, exchange your ideas, have fun, party, and everything. So, it is... I would like to add one more thing here. Yeah. See, in India, we have like CBSC and different state boards, etc. Yeah. And then we have the IB, which is the International Baccalaureate, which is the International Board. Now, if a student is studying from the IB board in our country, then he does not need to do IELTS. Okay. That is not mandatory because he's already studying through the international board pattern. Okay. But yes, even if that student gives, it will be an ad benefit. Yeah. It is going to be easier. Yeah. So now there is a question that people, I have never been abroad. First of all, you have to note this. I was going to USA, Kentucky in 2009, but something happened in my family. My father left us, so I could not go. And now I don't want to go as an employee or as a student. So I will definitely go as a traveler, as a tourist. Okay. Now the situations Great. have changed. Okay. So now my question is, um, is life really fancy there for the students? Or they face some challenges? There are some problems they never share with their families or with the people in India. So how is the life there? See, uh, okay. Great one. <laughs> See, the thing is, we always try to go for a more developed country than ours, right? Yeah. And of course, I will say the first shock that Indian students get is the cultural shock, right? We can say the moment they step their foot on the foreign soil, their life changes. So that adaptability must be there. And obviously, if we stay... We are we are we plan to stay in another country for like two years or three years. We must be in the adaptive mode. Only then we can make our life easier. We should understand that we don't have to be judgmental with them, right? It is their culture, and ours. So we should respect theirs, and we are also like uh, as students uh, studying there. We are the brand ambassadors of our own country. Right. So, old. we can definitely share our culture with them and at the same time, respect theirs. Yes, in the initial stages, students uh, do feel homesickness, right? And then a certain, uh, you know, formalities need to be fulfilled. And in fact, that is one thing which I am planning in my niche 
that I'm actually in the process of building a community where a counselor job will not end at the time like when we have given admission. Yeah, the yeah. formalities are complete. But when a student steps, you know, on the foreign soil, we can do handholding there also. Because I am actually working with 30 countries. So I do plan to, you know, have th like 30 chapters, right? Where my past students, new ones, or even those Indians who want to volunteer in this. So it's all about empathy, right? Helping the kids. So if they can, if they want to extend their hand to those students, so it will be great. A kind of community where they can get the help. Yes. They can yeah. help, further help. Great idea, sir. And actually, I was uh, reading one of the articles online, maybe two, three years ago. They were talking about the same concept, that even after students have got the admission, we are not going to leave them. We are going to handhold them for their entire uh, um, yeah, time. That is great. They are there. Required. So, I, I was uh, reading about that. The next question I have is, uh, do you also help students in India to get higher education? Uh, see, we don't have any tie-ups because okay. we are counselors. So we do guide them like uh, in what course they should uh, take admission or like which program of study should be there. But we are not like into, uh, for example, in abroad also, we are not like giving placements right in india also we can only suggest the universities but yes if they need any help regarding the admission uh, in fulfilling the admission process that we can help but admission is like their eligibility and the university is an issue got it thank you very much kapil ji now the next question is uh, there are so many students uh, in india who have this query they want to uh, go abroad and they don't have enough money. So is there any way for the people who cannot afford that they can still go? Is there any way for that? Yeah. Thanks for asking this question because yes, that is the primary concern of many students. All right? Yeah. See, uh, we can address this question in multiple ways, right? Just yeah. like in India, uh, we have government colleges, uh, whose fees is very less, right? Okay. The same way, the world over, and especially in Europe, the public universities, like in India, we call private schools to be public schools. Yeah. But actually, public schools should have been government schools. So that is the approach uh, uh, abroad, that public universities means government universities. Yeah. Now, they have technically no tuition. Okay. Right? So, half the job is done. Right. And we just have to pay for the living expenses. Yes. Then, secondly, what they demand is that you should be able to arrange the finances for one year of education. Okay. Right? Then, because they allow the students to do internships, and that okay. is like 20 hours per week, and yeah. that is perfectly legal, so the students don't get exploited. Okay. But that amount is enough for to sustain easily, comfortably, but not in a lavish lifestyle, but in a decent lifestyle, right? And many universities make it mandatory in the third year itself that you have to do internships. So those are paid internships there. So it's not like in India that uh, we do internships, but we are not paid, right? But there, when a child does an internship, he's paid well. Uh, that is that he can manage his life skills, uh, basically lifestyle, basic lifestyle. But, so that is how we can. Then there are uh, different scholarships by government of India also, but then there are scholarships by corporates. The, the scholarships can be offered by different universities also. So there are multiple ways we can that. Then apart from that, we can have student loans. We do help students in acquiring student loans also. And uh, the, the best part of a student loan is that you have to start paying after you complete your studies. So it's like after six months or one year, whichever is a year. So a student gets time to get a job and then start paying from his own income. So 
I would say that nowadays, lack of funds shouldn't be a deterrent because we have many facilities. But uh, yes, awareness should be there to get that. Yeah. So if and then uh, once again, these counselors come into play because they yeah, are aware yeah. about expert advice. So yes. if the person is committed, that person can always go abroad. to study to get job so do you also assist people in getting jobs abroad or just to study just study yes. okay great so you now i have an internship somewhere sometimes yeah now i have a weird question <clears throat> like uh, there is a person in india who is like 40 like me and he gets his desire that i now i want to study in canada i just want to go to canada maybe for study purpose maybe this is the excuse to go to canada or And I have heard stories that people go to Canada or some countries for study purposes, and they do something, and then they shift there permanently. What is that story? How easy it is? See, I wouldn't say that it's easy because if you are doing something which is against the law, so then we can say जब तक पकड़े नहीं गए. So anything legal for the person who is forty that can go? See, if it's not like that. uh let's say you have you want to you know the age limit of doing a certain course exists in our country okay right but it's not abroad right okay so if you want to actually go there and study right that's perfectly fine then you can choose a country where they allow students to work also and okay. mainly let's say if you have you are already a graduate and you want to go for masters right so in most masters program they actually allow students to work so the person can sustain their there right okay and after completing the masters then obviously he can go for a proper job and then work properly because obviously upskilling yourself will always help So, so it's a good why is not go the year then in in india we say that a masters is for 2 years yeah but abroad you can do it in one year also okay okay so it's a good news that any any person of any age can go abroad and study right yeah that's a, that's a good news to good thing to know actually for me now there is a question uh, it is coming to my mind and so many students are asking this online that there are so many fake on universities abroad how students can avoid uh, getting into these problems of getting cheated by these fake universities yes see uh that like uh, how i said a while earlier that we must do the proper research right then we must check the credentials of the faculty because these universities do inform about the kind of faculty they have right or is anybody resorting to pressure tactics maybe let's you say that you who acts as a counselor right now he is actually pressurizing you to get admission into a particular university right so maybe there is some you know wahan pe garban hai right so we have to then you have to verify the contact information and one another way of doing it is that you can always contact the embassy of that country okay and know the credentials they will definitely inform you if you if you write an email to the embassy asking them for the details they will definitely tell you that is it a fake one or is it a true one yeah and embassy is a reliable thing ha huh. yeah and then let's say if you trust your counselor then obviously he'll be giving you the right information great That's Now, the, not, because some many people go just like that or by fake promises, very rosy kind of situations, they usually fell into it. So very right. very good point uh, that if you want to verify the university, just uh, write to that country's embassy, and embassy yeah. has lots of responsibility, so they will always provide the. Ha. Huh. They will direct they will information. Will information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood, sir. Thank you very much for sharing this precious tip with us. Now the next question is: What are the main challenges people face when trying to study abroad? Means uh, when they are trying to go abroad, what challenges they face in this process? Please, uh, likewise, I just answered a while ago 
that one mm-hmm. or the foremost challenge is the culture shock right that's more of a the culture shock comes right. later culture shock comes later the person see, is if culture the shock be... see okay if you say while preparing for the yeah, studying just abroad, trying okay. to go abroad yeah okay theek hai see obviously once uh, to begin with that if he isn't uh, done his research so the person actually doesn't know a thing where to go which program to study what will be the budgetary requirements and what will be my life after i complete my degree right all these are doubts and that is why a person needs to do research or sh- should take expert advice and i would say that my that's what my webinar is all about that i'm planning this sunday right that great right. i will be educ- that is basically educating people about these uh, you know uh, you can say biases or myths uh, people might have right then once he gets everything then then comes the language barrier the cultural shocks etc or different life for example uh, and home sickness is a very because see even if you land there if you are not able to adjust you if you just suffer from too much of home sickness you might need to come back right because the health deteriorates or if a student is not able to manage his financials properly because in india the parents are doing it right 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 but right. when you land there you have to buy the groceries yourself you have to manage all your life style yourself right so even if the money is coming from the parents but then also that's a that has a limit to that right but if a student is so obviously the financial mess will give him stress and then so, the style of teaching is a huge difference it's right. more of a practical based case study based not like in india yeah we have lots of theories yeah yeah so we are coming to the end with the last question and the last question is three easy and life saving tips for the students who want to study abroad okay <laughs> three tips see first of all one must begin with the research great right that is very very important second plan ahead it isn't like that a student has got, uh, given a class 12th exam now he approaches the counselor no he is late we usually suggest that if you plan to go abroad then come in 11th standard so that we have ideally 18 months of time to actually groom you to prepare you to prepare you for certain exams if you need to give them or to prepare for the new language that is required and somehow the same thing goes for those people who go for masters but then there are certain people who come to us that they want their kids to be in the best university in the like say harvard oxford right there are people and they feel that their kid is very intelligent so he's capable of doing that but then for them the advices come to us in when your child in class 8 because it's not like in india that you scored 90% in class 12 and you can get admission they would check your whole profile how you have been doing in the pre- what is your growth and not only the academics but your social behavior we what are your extra curricular so everything comes in a package so as a counselor we also need like those 4 to 5 years to actually groom that child to be fit for the world's best right 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 so the and the last thing i would say be open minded be adaptive theek hai love the culture where you try to learn to them see even in india like we say if we meet any foreigner in our land and that person speaks in our native language we love to interact if a person is celebrating a foreigner is celebrating our festival with us we love that so the same thing happens when you go abroad if you interact with people people will receive you in a positive way so your life will be easy there right 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 awesome thank you thank you very much kapilji now it is your turn if you want to add anything if you have any message 
for the people who for the students for the families for the parents who are interested in this topic your last message we i will only say like you already taken the three pain points right but finances is not a constraint if we plan properly yes it is all together a different experience our child children become you know global citizens right so their growth actually improves they become financially responsible so it is a whole package so let us not compare education in our country with education abroad for a very simple reason and let us not go into moralities many people would ask me yeah it is like a brain drain so i would all, always say it's not a brain drain because we are not sending educated individuals we are actually sending kids for education right and at the end they will still have that choice to come back to their home country or work anywhere so it's actually the world is full of opportunities so why not grab them and they're great <clears throat> thank you very much so dear friends if you're watching this video and you are really trying to understand that how you can go abroad you must have got so many answers and you must have got a lot of clarity for your questions now if you are really interested if you are really committed to go abroad you must get in touch with a qualified consultant like kapil gupta ji who is the founder of a study abroad no need to struggle he has great experience he has been helping thousands and thousands of people so i am going to put the description put the link in the description just click on that link and you will be able to attend a free session by kapil gupta ji and you will get much more information in that session once again i would like to say thank you kapil ji for coming uh, yeah i would like just add one thing yeah sir. sure sure because if students are uh, keen on knowing this i am conducting a session on sunday at 11 they can definitely connect with me and join that session i'm sure they will get great insights about study abroad and they must attend it along with their parents so that you know they can have first hand information about it. right right thank you thank you very much kapil ji namaskar thank you thank you sunil ji it was lovely talking to you.